Hello, I am Dr. Renu Mehtani and today I am going to share with you how valuable it is to correct our sway back if we want our low back aches to go away. So what is this sway back? Sway back means when the curvature of our lower back is more than what it is supposed to be. You can see in this slide how the concavity in the middle picture is more and that is a sway back or a overarched back. And what does it lead to? Please see the line diagram on the right side. It leads to pinching of the discs behind. Discs are like cushion given to us by nature and when they get pinched, we get pain in, a, in our lower back. Uh, many more pictures are there in my book, The Power of Posture, with all the explanations. But today I feel the need of sharing it little more practically with majority because majority of the low back cannot be corrected till the sway back has been corrected properly. We may be doing the best of exercises, the best of physiotherapy practices, but the sway back needs a correction. And why has it happened so much? It's because our front abdominal muscles have become lax and the muscles behind in the back area have become tight due to all our lifestyle patterns. So the muscles have to be brought into a state of balance and bring back the bones into alignment. So we are ready now for a practical session. So Swati Gandhi, our friend who's going to demo, thank you very much once again. So let's first start with the basic and that is breathing. Nothing is complete without correct and coordinated breathing. Okay. So now, first of all, Swati, keep your one hand on the belly. Yeah, okay, you can keep both the hands. Huh? So let's talk of the way we used to breathe when we were born and we came on this planet, belly breathing. So we exhale and let the abdomen get squeezed or pulled in. Inhale and let the belly relax. You don't have to push it out too much. Swati is doing it for us so that we can see it. But you don't have to push it out, okay? Just allow it to relax. And we are purposefully exhaling from the mouth so that the belly sucking in action is deeper. Hmm? So exhale from the mouth. Pull the belly in Swati. Yeah. And inhale. Let your belly relax. One more time. Exhale. Become slim, slimmer, slimmest. And inhale. Nose to relax. Now, if we don't get it with this, we'll make it easier. By keeping a book on the belly. Now see how the book moves. Huh? So now when she breathes out, the book will sink in. And when she breathes in, the belly relaxes, the book comes up. Exhale. Squeeze the air out. Become slim, slimmer, slimmest. And inhale. Wonderful. Thank you Swati. You can keep the book aside. Now based on this, we have a wonderful practice. Keep a cushion between your knees. Okay, so now this practice will be done in two parts. First, she breathes out and pulls her belly in, becomes slim. Now she will squeeze the cushion with her legs. Hold it for a count of five in your mind. Don't allow the belly to soften. You can keep breathing into the chest but not into the belly. And release with an inhalation. I'll take a closer zoom in view. Yeah. So now exhale. Abdomen in, squeeze the cushion. So when she squeezes, what happens? Her belt area comes up and her tail area goes down and the lower back completely flattens on the bed. Inhale, release. We'll show it once again. Exhale, mouth. Squeeze the cushion, see how the belt area from the front goes up. Hips came down slightly. Hold it for a few seconds and release. So it's a combination of breath, movement of muscles that creates beautiful alignment into your spine and energizes the nervous system too. Okay, great. So friends, these were the fundamentals or basic understanding on how to use our muscles and bring our bones in a state of 
correct alignment. Let's now apply it to our practices, be it yoga, be it physiotherapy, or any form of exercise lying down on the mat. So I invite Swati once again to lie down now. And let's know one thing. If you lie down with straight legs, we overarch the sway back. So we lie down with folded legs, which gives a rest to our lumbar spine or the lower back. And all exercises should start from here and not from a straight leg position. You can see in this slide in the lower half, a thick cushion or a pillow has been kept below the knees. This is to show how to sleep or lie down when you're relaxing so that your back is comfortable. But right now we are going to exercise so we don't need this cushion and we keep the legs properly folded. So the technique we are going to first impress upon is imprinting of the back. You can see with the help of this little dynamic picture how the imprinting is happening. And here all the same principles are being applied. So what is the principle? First, belly has to go in. And for that we have practiced exhalation. The power is in breathing out and pulling the belly in. And in the second half of breathing out, we bring our tailbone down towards the heels so that the lower back gets flat and sort of imprints on the bed or the floor wherever you're lying down. All right. So we'll now make it practical. Swati, let's do it three times. So Swati exhales from her mouth, pulls her belly flat so that she looks as slim as she can. And now in the second half of breathing out, she imprints the lower back and see how the belt from the front goes up if there was a belt and if there's a belt behind it is going down towards the heels release it swati so exhale through the mouth pull the belly in continue exhaling and let the navel come up towards your chest and if you have a tail imaginary tail it is going down towards your heels Maintain this core tone and breathe from your nose into your chest. Please do not allow the abdominal or the belly muscles to relax. And now to release, you inhale from the nose and let go. This will be followed by natural deep breaths. Please do enjoy a couple of them. And now the third time, exhale from the mouth, pull the belly in. Continue exhaling to bring your tail down towards your heels. Let's call it belly in, tail down like a mantra. Hold the position as you breathe into your chest. 5 to 10 seconds. And now as you inhale, you let go. Do this practice at least 10 times in the morning, 10 times in the evening before you get up to see that your back is happier and pain-free. So having understood this most basic fundamental practice called imprinting, it will be a part and parcel of all the other practices that follow. If we do any exercise without imprinting, we will be hurting our backs. All right? Friends, our ancestors had such a good core tone that their backs did not have a sway back. Right? They did not need this instruction of imprinting. But today, 99% of us, the muscles are different because we are no longer physically active like they were. And we need to first imprint the back, become like our ancestors, and then do the practices safely. So let's move on to the next one, which is called Ardha Pavan Muktasan and gives a stretch to the lower back muscles. We do it from a folded leg position. And we do one leg at one time. So let's start with the right leg. So first you flatten your back, imprinting it. And now holding your right folded leg with both the hands. All right. You pull it towards the chest as you exhale. 
the head remains on the cushion. Inhale, let the folded leg go away from you, but keep holding it. Again, exhale, pull the knee, fold it towards your chest. Inhale, let it go away. Exhale, pull the knee to your chest. Wonderful, feel the stretch in your lower back. And inhale, let the knee go away. Now bring the right foot down. We have done it three times. You can do it five times. It's up to you. Now the left leg. Okay. So fold it, take it up. And just a pointer in case somebody has very sensitive knees and they are painful. Do not hold the leg in such a way that you are pressing the knees down. Okay. Now you open the knee to a 90 degree angle. Hold the thigh and pull it towards your chest instead of pulling the knees. So three times on this side. Exhale. Pull the folded leg towards the chest. Inhale. Release. Exhale. Pull it towards the chest. Inhale. Release. Exhale. Pull the knee thigh to your chest. Inhale. Release. And now get your left foot down on the ground and feel the relaxation. Now we will do a very common practice single leg lift moving it up and down commonly people do it starting from a straight leg position without imprinting the backs and the same exercise could be damaging to the spine so it's so important that how we do rather than what we do so let's start from the folded leg position and the first thing we do is imprint the back so Swati, exhale from the mouth. Now we all know, belly in, tail down, imprint your spine. Maintain this. And now just take your right leg up, which is obliquely straight, both the thighs parallel. Okay. You can keep the leg here for five seconds and then bring it down. And alternatively, we can make it go up and down, but without giving up the imprinting. So Swati, bring your right leg down. Exhale, take it up. Inhale down, the back imprinting remains. Exhale, right leg up. One more time. Bring your right leg down, controlled action. And now exhale, bring your right leg up. Maintaining the imprint. Fold your right knee, bring the right foot down. And now release the imprint. Take a few breaths. And now we do the same thing on the left side. Okay? So, imprinting first, exhale, mouth, belly in, tail down. Now take your left leg up, obliquely straight, alright? Bring your left leg down, you need not touch it to the floor. Exhale, left leg up. Left leg down, exhale up. At any point, the lower back should not lift off the ground. Exhale, leg down, don't bring it too much down, right? And now exhale, take it up, fold your left leg on the knee, bring the left foot down and now release the imprint. You can follow this exercise with the Ardha Pavan Muktasan or the back stretch. We will do it one one time. Okay, so imprint it back, right leg, pull it up, holding it with both your arms. See that your right thigh and knee come down towards the chest. You can hold it for a while, few seconds. Another way of doing the same practice. Enjoy the stretch to your lower back. Okay. And now release. Bring the right foot down. And we do it with the left leg. So folding the folded left leg. Pull it towards your chest as you hold it with both your hands. And be there as you breathe. Each breath relaxes the tightness of your lower back. Enjoy. Enjoy this release. And now bring your left foot down, friends. And relax. Another common practice done is the bridge pose. Alright. So what is the common practice? Both the legs are folded. And we just raise our lower back as high as we can. So see how when it's wrongly done, how the belly is relaxed and bulging out. And how our sway back or the arching of the lower back remains, pressing the discs over there. How can this ever help release low back ache? And then we come down with a thud. 
Okay. So these are the unknowingly done wrong practices. Let's do it with awareness correctly. So we begin with an imprint. Exhale, imprint your back, belly in, tail down. Maintain the tone of muscles in the belly area and raise your hips up. Need not raise them too high. Four to five inches is a good lift. Be there. And to be there, you'll have to squeeze and contract your glutes or your hip muscles. This hip muscle is a weak one and needs to be strong to pull your tail down and help release the pressure from the discs. Hold it 5 to 10 seconds as you breathe into your chest. And now coming back is again done with awareness. Upper back down, middle back down, lower back down. Let's repeat it. Imprint your back with an exhalation. Flat, slim belly. Raise your hips up 4 to 5 inches and be there as you breathe. Let your muscles get strong, toned up so that they can support the bones in place all the time. Yes, and now let's slowly come down. Upper back, middle back, lower back comes down. One more time. Imprint your back. Exhale for that and now raise your lower back up with a flat, slim belly. Be there 5 inches, 4 inches. Breathe into your chest. Do not allow your lower belly to bulge out. Wonderful. And now slowly come back, upper back, middle back, lower back. It comes down. Alright, so these were the fundamentals, friends. They have to be applied in any mat practice that you do. And after this, you can do one more back stretch. All right. So Swati, let's do that right leg. Pull it up to your chest. Wonderful. Break it down. Left leg too now. Let's raise only the left leg up. Holding it. Pull it to your chest. Feel that stretch. And we gently bring the left foot down. And now we are going to come up. So it has to be done mindfully. Turn to the side. Be there for a while. Press the ground with your top palm and slowly come up to the sitting position. Please do not stand up immediately. Be there for a while. Let your circulation adjust itself. And now the next practice is going to be correct standing because we stand more rather than lie down. And if our standing is wrong, we are hurting our back. So let's now stand up. How can we unknowingly be harming our knees and the lower back? Wrong standing habits with the feet turned out into a big V. In this position, we make another blunder. We tend to push the knees way behind rather than keeping them in place. So when they go way behind, the knee joint gets damaged and you tend to create a sway back above. So we should not be locking our knees. We stand on parallel feet with unlocked knees where the knees are soft above the ankles. Another wrong, the overarched back when we stand. Okay, and it all starts from the feet. up. So see how the discs are getting pinched in this wrong standing position. No wonder back aches don't easily go. And then we should not be lifting the chest up and saying, ah, you know, the way we commonly do when we get a back ache. Because you're going to press the disc more in that. So what is right? We have to once again apply that principle of imprinting in the standing position. What is the right thing to do? Belly up, tail down. Okay. Let's make it simpler for you. Look at this diagram. The front one on the left side shows the wrong thing. Where your front part of the belly is falling down. And the hips are lifted up. Pressing the discs. So what do we do? We have to raise the navel up and for that you have to pull the belly in. So navel goes up and the hip or the tailbone comes down as visible in the right picture. So wrong as you can see very clearly here now when the lower back is getting overarched and the belly is dropping down and the right picture when it is corrected see how the pelvis or the hips get leveled. Okay so the navel goes in and up and the tailbone comes down. And now let's demonstrate it practically for you. So there we are, Swati. Keep one hand. Yeah, right. So first thing, you have to take your belly in 
and then try to bring your hips down. You don't have to overdo it. It should not be overdone, but moderately done so that it becomes a part of our posture actually. And right now we release it to get a feel of it. You can make it better by exhaling, navel slightly in and hips gently coming down. You should look nice in line. If it's overdone, it will create too much of tightness. So we find the middle point when it comes to the posture. Okay, let's release it to get just a feel of it. And we'll do it one more time. Navel in, belly in, tail down. Let this become our mantra. If it is difficult for you to do it 100% correct right now, please do not despair. You can at least squeeze your hips and that will pull the tail down. So let hip squeeze. Let me use the word hip tone rather than squeeze. Huh? A mild contraction of your hips, not overdone. Be a part of your posture. Our yogis called it Mool Bandha and they advocated that Mool Bandha should be applied all the time. So it's not tightness friends, it's tone. Okay, and you'll keep yourself away from backache. Wishing you all the best of health and a pain-free back and a slim and trim belly which people will appreciate. Thank you very much.